everyone, it's Andy with Reverb and today I'd like to help you steal this sound and it's all about building a genre specific pedal board on a budget. So we're starting off with shoegaze and with only $250 to spend on Reverb, I was able to get five pedals here. So I want to show you the thought process behind getting each one of these pedals and most importantly how they interact with each other to really kind of get as close as we can to shoegaze and all these surrounding genres. So let's get into it. I usually start a board thinking about the gain stages, and with this scenario, I wanted one that was going to play double duty. Luckily, I remembered the DoD Bone Shaker, which was a collaboration with Blackheart's Toneworks, and it really covered a huge range of gain, plus it had concentric pots, which gives you three band parametric EQ. So even if you don't use the gain, you could use this pedal to shape the whole board. With it being discontinued, I was unsure if the prices had shot up, but thankfully I scored one for 60 bucks, well worth it. Next, I wanted to search for a cheap fuzz that can just give me that powerful wall of sound that you often hear in shoegaze. I figured a muff clone or something similar would suffice, but then after I sorted it by cheapest, this Behringer Super Fuzz came up, and being a fan of the Boss Hyper Fuzz, it was a no-brainer. Not only does it have those two shin E voicings, but also a booster mode that gives you clean boost with more active bass and treble. So we're completely covered from clean boost to full on fuzz and EQ just with two pedals. Time-based effects were next on the list, and I knew we weren't gonna find a reverse reverb at this price, but guess what? Not every shoegaze band uses reverse reverb, and lots get by with a simple but spacious haul or plate since the budget was getting tight, I sorted it again by price, and I saw this new X Oceanic Reverb, which comes stock with a nice haul algorithm. To add movement, I thought Chorus would be nice in the mix, so I let the price decide, and lo and behold, a new inbox Dan Electro Fab Chorus came up for $23.95, and that included shipping. I hadn't played one before, but a quick clip I found showed me that it was going to be a nice studio-style chorus that gets pretty warbly too when you crank up the depth. Delay is also very important in this genre, and I really wanted a clean digital pedal with hopefully some extra modulation and fairly long delay times. For 50 bucks, I stumbled upon this Joyo D Seed, which I'd never played before, but it had tap tempo and four different modes, so I figured I could make it work. It also had a modulation mode, so if you really wanted to stretch your dollar, you could swap the chorus out for, say, a tremolo pedal. So there it is, five pedals, and the grand total came in under budget at $245, just enough to buy some extra picks. So we'll start with that Fab Chorus. I think it's a really great choice for this genre because it's more of a detuned sound rather than a classic, you know, wavering chorus. Of course, you could get some really uh, wiggly sounds when you increase the depth and the speed, but let me just show you the sound I kind of settled on, which, uh, like I said, is sort of a detune uh, and it's a slower rate. I'll crank up the mix and the depth and we could get some, uh, you know, really pitch bending sounds and you don't even have to have a guitar with a trem arm. <laughs> I think a big part of this sound is space. So let's go to the reverb next, and I'll just uh, put a slower chorus on the tails of that reverb.
the decay is all the way up, but we have the mix actually back. So I'm just gonna hold this foot switch and crank it up. So now we have level and decay maxed out. And of course this gets embellished when you put a uh, dirt before or even after it. <laughs> So this hall reverb has a lot of bass. So uh, again, having the bone shaker with that three band EQ is really helpful. Uh, you know, you could kind of get some, uh, you know, flubbed out sounds if your amp is really getting pummeled with low end. So you could shave off some low end after that reverb. Now let's hit the beginning of that reverb chain with some super fuzz. <laughs> really see how putting some dirt after the reverb really just kind of accentuates the slightest thing and it just extends the decay and the sustain uh, so you know if you're playing really sparse it really just takes off uh, so it's again a, a perfect fit for this kind of shoegaze style pedal board now let's go to the end and see how we could delay this whole you know just kind of mishmash of uh, chorus and dirt and reverb <laughs> helps to have a clean delay in this instance. I'll go over to the analog mode, which is kind of a warmer sound, and it's not as clear. If you have a rhythmic sound, you really want to keep those repetitions going. The analog sound is going to be kind of a softer uh, effect. Now go back to modulated. Something to also think about with this type of pedal board is you know, how much you can grow with the signal. Uh, you know, you want a dynamic sound. So, you know, having multiple gain stages is helpful, which is why I have the fuzz that can also be a boost and the uh, bone shaker, which can also be EQ, so you get a little bit extra volume there. And then when you throw fuzz and everything on top of it, as well as a very detuned modulation, it's a sound that can build. And I think that's really important uh, when you're building this kind of pedal board.
you go, 250 bucks gets you five pedals on reverb and you could build a shoegaze or similar genre pedal board. And again, you know, just getting a pedal that can kind of do uh, multiple things was the goal for me here. So I think that could really help you out. And, you know, uh, playing with pedal order is key, of course, especially in shoegaze. So, you know, we, we tried to steal the sound under 250 bucks. Let us know what uh, genre we should hit next. And, you know, it's a really interesting challenge and I had a whole lot of fun. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.